film, gaming, pop culture. Welcome to episode 30 of Everything is Permitted here at Wade's Comic Madness. I'm your host, Julian Brown, alongside my co-hosts, Matt Reppert and Brittany Tomes. Whoop How whoop. we doing? Uh, not too bad, especially after... Actually, last night was a lot of fun. Last night was a blast. I, I couldn't have asked for a better debut bargain bin movie night. Mm-hmm. I had a really good time. The the only the only bad part about last night was the popcorn kernels that I had stuck in my teeth for like the rest of the <laughs> evening, which just wasn't fun. And I was like trying to pick them while watching Dark Crystal. And I was like, Aah. you mean it wasn't the super thought provoking and deep film that stuck with you forever? No, um, it will not stick with me forever. Though uh, we will get to that in our. <laughs> our it, it, well, it'll it'll stick with you much like a herpes infection will uh, stick with quite you. literally. No, I think it's going to be more of an Avatar. Like you'll forget about ninety percent of the plot within. Shut the up! Next I love month. Avatar. I love Avatar too, but most people forget about like literally all well, the characters. This is scenes. awkward because I don't really care for Avatar. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys. Are <laughs> for another me. day. Um. Yeah. So we had our first. Ewa. What? It's I... from Avatar. Sorry. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that movie, Pandora. Um. And unobtainium. Unobtainium. Uh, <laughs> like we both thought of it. Shout out to like, the people of the that department that couldn't figure out a name until right before the movie happened. Then they're like, uh, unobtainium. <laughs> um, just a quick word of warning. What? Uh, actually, before I give the quick word of warning, it's pretty cool. This is episode thirty. That's. I feel like that's a milestone. Yeah. It's older than me. Oh, God. We bring that up every show, and we will continue to forever and ever until you are thirty. If we keep going I'm used that to long. It. <laughs> um, just a quick word of warning, uh, if it's a little loud and you hear some people in the background, it is a busy day here at The Madness. We have D&D going on in the other side of the basement. D&D. Wade is having a big end of summer sale, which is awesome. Um, obviously you missed it, because, you know, you're listening to this on Tuesday. And but, next uh, week is Batman Day. But next week is Batman Day, so come check Batman Day out, because who doesn't love Batman? I have some really cool news before we get to Rants and Raves. Do it. Here's some progress. On our crowdfunding campaign. Yeah. As of this recording, we are already 60% funded for our new equipment. So from Matt, from Brittany, thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We have no idea how much this means to us. We're almost at our goal already. We can already fund four new microphones. It's also $200 going towards our new soundboard. I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Thunderous applause. (laughs) And I don't mean like the Republic Falls with thunderous applause. I just mean thunderous applause. Yeah, thunderous applause. Yay. Um, we can't wait to start fulfilling some of the perks that you signed up for. Those are going to be fun. Um, next month's bargain bin is not in our control, which uh, certainly... The, the, those of you, those of you doing the bargain bin, you don't know what you just put yourself in. Into. I like that that's a wild card, too. Like Usually like we end up picking the movie. We're not in control of that. It's going to be either really awful or semi-awful. Uh, what it, if it's, it's like surprisingly good and we're like, what do we do? <laughs> it's going to be fun. But um, 60%, that means we have $400 to go. So please, uh, if you could donate anything, even a dollar helps. Uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Thank you to those who already donated. We still have, I think, 20-something days left. So plenty of time to reach our $1,000 goal. So thank you. Not going to spend a whole lot of time on that because we've done so well. Um, we are going to go right into Rants and Rays if anybody has one. Matt, I usually start with you. I'm going to change it up and go in a circle this time. Brittany? <laughs> never has one I never ready. have one. You just got, I got to go second because I got to really think about what you got to really think about what <laughs> you're going to rant and All right. Week. Well, let's, just like last week, let's go over to Matt first then. So I'll, I'll, ha- I'll have a rant. I, obviously, everybody knows that I, I collect steel books and yeah, I know people are going to roll their eyes. Um, the thing that, that I'm actually going to rant about is people who come in to the store and they buy like three or four of the damn things. And I know you're not like trying to collect them, watch them. You're trying to sell them on eBay at, at a markup basically because they're limited run. And as soon as they run out, because I saw an older gentleman and I, f- I think it was uh, Alita Battle Angel. So this was like a month or two ago. And very few of those things came out. Like they were like, I managed to snag one literally just by pure happenstance. And I saw this guy grabbing like three of them oh. off the shelf. And I just wanted to be like, dude, man, can you like, I thought you did end up saying something to someone. No, I, I didn't say anything. I mean, I didn't say anything to any, I mean, what are they going to do? Like they got, there's no, the store go has home and no limit. Lives. There's no like, Oh, you're only allowed to buy one, go two. home and rethink your life. <laughs> <laughs> want to buy some death sticks. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, I always hate that because it's, people that are legitimately, maybe they can't get to the store when it opens because they don't have the ability to, like, they're going to be sold out. And now you, you messaged me as I was feeding Caleb and there was no way I was going to get out to get brave. 
yeah. and you kindly picked up a copy for me. I have to reserve your stupid copy of Dark Phoenix. Yeah, okay, you know what? You can stop. I, even though I haven't seen the movie, I have all the other X-Men movies. I gotta I'm, complete I'm, it. I'm giving you the judge real hard there, man. <sighs> oh, I, I, I understand having to own them all. Uh, that's the limit for me. Like, I own all the other X-Men movies. I'm not buying Dark Phoenix. I'm just, I'm not. I'm not well, I have to see how, because basically this is it for this, probably yeah. for this group, for this cast. And unfortunately, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender are very good actors. And mm-hmm. I want to see how they kind of close out their roles. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something to say that would make me, I, I think I would, I would buy that movie from the bargain bin. <laughs> I would buy that movie from the bargain. Okay, bin. bargain bin movie night. Let's go. Yeah, so we can watch Phoenix. me cry over the Dark Phoenix saga, but not in the normal way. <laughs> um, <laughs> two quick sidebars about that, real mm. quick. One, uh, Kevin Feige came out today uh, at a panel and said that they had filmed a longer version of the end credit scene of the original Iron Man with Sam Jackson and Tony Stark, or sorry, Robert Downey, where in the speech about the Avengers Initiative and being you're not the only hero out there. Fury mentions the X-Men. He, he doesn't say the X-Men specifically, but he says mutants and Spider-Man, radioactive bitten people. Mm-hmm. So they had a grand... They were ready for Like it. a bigger grand plan. Hmm. Uh, obviously didn't get the rights yeah, early yeah. enough to do that. But I think that's really cool. And um, what's even better about that is that the scene is actually going to be in the Infinity Saga box set. So you'll actually be able to see it. Oh, that's cute. It's hmm. pretty cool. How about that? Also, on the X-Men subject... The animated series is going to be on Disney+. I know, Plus. I'm sweating. I'm so <laughs> we're, excited. We're getting ahead of ourselves here. We um, already... I know it's on I know it's on the permanent <laughs> minute, but I, I had to mention it earlier. Brittany, rant or rave? Um, I guess a little rave. I just started Carnival Row, and I know you've watched it all, right? Or like you've gotten I, really yeah, far. I finished it yesterday. Okay. I think it's pretty good so far. Like, I'm enjoying it. My mom's enjoying it. She likes cool stuff. But once again, I haven't finished it, but I've heard good things. So it's so, something I'm excited about. I like the setting a lot, like mm-hmm. this like cool, like steampunk type of London. T- it's not. It's called the Berg. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not actually London, uh, but might very as well be though. Yeah, it might. It's like well industrialization, but if you had some fae thrown in there, exactly. Know. So you have like centaurs, you have werewolves, you have fae, you have. Uh, what are the? You head to the city centaur. Uh, <laughs> the pun strike again. Centaur city. Oh, we could make it in Philly. How um. Fae-ly. I'm done. Sorry. You get need me to out of here. Get out. I didn't even have iced get coffee. Out. There's no excuse. Guys. What episode are you on? We're on episode 30. <laughs> I think you meant of Carnival. You're I think, fired. I think like You're fired. Three or four. I don't remember. Okay. So, off. yeah, it's only an eight episode season. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. we get in there. Um, I liked it. Uh, I don't have anything like bad to say about it. I have a, a small complaint that it was, there were way too many subplots. Oh, yeah. They should have maybe like brought it down to like, one or two maybe three things uh it's a little convoluted and because of that there should have been more episodes Mm -hmm. um renewed for a second season it's a really good show it's probably why they did it then you're like let's keep them (laughs) equally confused and no questions are answered until the next season yeah i'll I'll just do a quick rave even though we're probably gonna have to do an episode about it down the road is the dark crystal netflix (gasps) I'm, i'm only three episodes in i've you know heather and i have been watching it amazing show just yeah, the artistry I, and it. Dude, the and puppetry. Well, watch the documentary. I cried three times just watching the show, first of all. <laughs> One was just from hearing the score. So you know where I stand <laughs> on the Dark Crystal. And then I watched the documentary immediately afterwards. And I actually have a photo that I shared to my group chat, like my family group chat, called Crit Happens. It used to be called Game of Tones. It's really funny. Oh, but anyway, I shared <laughs> when some. When is this going to end? It's just me I feel crying. like I'm in a room she, with my father right now. Machine. You're yeah. welcome. Um, but yeah, I was like crying and I actually had to send it to him because I was like, I've been crying for the last hour straight because I watched the documentary and I was just like so moved. And I was like, I wish Jim Henson were still alive so he could see how his creation is so loved by people. Anyway. It's uh, it's it's actually it's a cool documentary. Speaking of Jim Henson, without like gushing over him too too much, it, it's actually struck me like he died in nineteen. He's been dead almost thirty years. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just it's like it's been a while. Didn't he die in nineteen ninety four? I think he died in ninety. Ninety two. I think I thought no. he died in ninety. He died before I was even born. Yeah. Um, One way or the other, he died so before he was born. Going along with what Matt said, we are a little bit slow talking about Dark Crystal because we're all at different places. Brittany's finished it year three, four episodes in. We yeah. just watched I literally it. watched it like twice already. Yeah. And the we're, original film twice. And just bought yeah. the board game upstairs. <laughs> um, I'm six episodes in. So when we're all done watching it, even though it'll be a little late, we will we will do a um, a review of it. And I can for do sure. all the voices. Oh, I have a rant. Hup. Hup. Oh, hup, 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 hup. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hope is Paladin. Uh, we have a rant. I have a rant about uh, our movie night on Tuesday mm-hmm. when we went to go see It Chapter 2. I understand walking out of a movie that you think sucks. I've done it once. I've, I've only walked out of a movie once. It was for the Brothers Grimm. That's mm-hmm. weakness. It, it I've never walked out of a single movie, and I saw Wing Commander. I, hated I walked that out of so Spider-Man much. 3 this is when I was in college. Avatar I went out into the but you went back in. brutal Vermont cold and sat outside and <laughs> when I was still smoking cigarettes. Shame. Tisk tisk. And just like smoked a pack of cigarettes while my friends were watching this shitty, shitty movie. And it's the one and only time I've walked out of a movie. What I don't understand and what infuriates me Two hours and 42 minutes into It Chapter 2, literally the end, Mm -hmm. people walked out before the movie was over. There was like another five minutes of just like closure to that film. And I get, and we're going to talk about it in our review later on, like that maybe it had a kind of Lord of the Rings style uh, ending, Mm -hmm. but why commit two hours and 40 minutes and not stick around for the last five minutes? Yeah. Like, did... Did you miss your curfew? Like, there's no. Yeah, there were good... a lot of teenagers left, so I'm wondering if they were like, "Oh no, it's midnight." But there's no good like reason tomorrow, bro. to walk out of that movie yeah. at that time. I was like, very surprised. You've already sat through the whole damn thing, so I mean, it, listen, it's your money at the end of the day. Fine, like I, I don't care that much, but I just thought it was really peculiar. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. Stick through. Yeah, it was a weird moment for a lot of people to leave. And I was just like, do you think the credits are about to roll in like two seconds? Because like, no, we're no. not there yet, man. <laughs> no. This is not a sporting event or a concert where it's smart to leave You're not early beating so you the beat traffic. The it's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it's AMC <laughs> Nishamani. Like, yeah. You're fine. Um, That's my, my quick little rant. Uh, we have a great show for you today. Uh, this is a very movie-centric episode. We have our Rated as the Bargain Bin segment to do. And then we are going to be reviewing It Chapter 2, which we went and saw on Tuesday. But before we do that... We have to get to the permitted minute. Yay! The permitted minute. I had to do that extra epic for episode 30. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> we are going to go in five, four, three, two, one. Todd Phillips' Joker film is a standalone feature, according to the director, and will not cross over with the upcoming Robert Pattinson Batman film. On the subject of the Joker, word is that the role was written for Joaquin Phoenix and that no other actor was offered the role. Animated series like X-Men, Spider-Man, and Iron Man from the 90s will be available day one on Disney+. Plus. As GameStop tries to stay relevant, the video game retailer will close up to 200 of its underperforming stores by the end of 2019. The upcoming Hawkeye series on Disney+, Plus has offered the role of Kate Bishop to actress and singer Haley Steinfeld, who starred in Bumblebee and played the animated Gwen Stacy in Into the Spider-Verse. Nintendo, hearkening back to the popular Wii system, just announced the Ring Fit and Adventure Fitness game for the Switch. For the tabletop gamers out there, the latest Ticket to Ride will feature Japan and Italy and is rumored to be released in the States in January. For seven, we got that done in plenty of time, so like 12 seconds left. Interesting. Very and ironically, interesting. I, and Brittany I had a fumble. I said Witten instead you of Written. <laughs> I was, I was going to... It's because I didn't read it ahead of time. is Witten here today. <laughs> Mowage is what brings <laughs> us together love. today. Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix is what brings us to the Joker today. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I And I could have put a couple of more news bits. Uh, you know, James Gunn released the, the full cast for Suicide Squad... But uh, I, I thought Seven was going to be a bit of a test. <laughs> my, my favorite thing from the James Gunn thing is how, like, somebody blacked out John Cena's name and just put, like, why is there an empty space here? <laughs> <laughs> God, John Cena's in everything now. But, yeah, so seven of those in about 50, 48 What if you seconds? go to watch Suicide Squad? <laughs> And you go into the theater, and it just starts out, and it's like, John Cena, <laughs> and it's just one of those videos. You can't see me. Yeah. That was like that was like one of my favorite what if he like, appear the whole film? favorite things is when everybody was doing John Cena. Like you can't video. see me. Well, not no, even, not even just videos, that, but like, like they, but but they like they would take like videos and cut it up, and they and like it would be like a serious moment in a movie. Like my God, like who are we gonna call John Cena? And like yeah. and like the whole thing his intro That's kicks what they in. Should do. I still think the best videos out there are RKOs out of nowhere. I love those. <laughs> those, those are good. Those too. are so good. Uh, Randy Orton went on vacation recently. His wife, with his yeah, wife, and that. his wife RKO'd him, and it was brilliant. <laughs> love it. All right, we're gonna take a quick break so we can get to our bargain bin segment. Uh, we recorded a portion of it live during bargain bin movie night. Mm-hmm. So uh, Raiders of the Bargain Bin is coming up right after this break. Hey, look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! All right, welcome back to episode 30, and Matt, uh, it is time for... Oh, 
Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Raiders have been bargain bin. <laughs> Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Raiders of the bargain bin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Excited as always. Uh, I, I, I've said this before, but this might be the like the worst idea I have ever had, and I I'm I'm dreading this movie. You're like Doctor Frankenstein. Yeah, and I, I love it. I'm I'm excited. Uh, this bargain bin is a little different because we are here live at Wade's Comic Madness, where yes. we always record. Mm-hmm. Bit of a special night. It's our first ever bargain bin movie night. We have an audience. We have all your favorite movie theater wares, and we're gonna watch the movie with an audience and yeah. see what they think about it. Yeah, I mean I'm like. I, I watched the trailer for this movie in preparation and I don't know I don't know what to expect from this movie going in because I thought that, you know, like the trailer made it seem like that there's some suicide that happens and this girl gets blamed for it and so everybody starts unfriending her, but there might be something else killing people. I don't know. Like the, I was so confused by the trailer. If you didn't know by now, we are gonna be watching the movie Friend Request by and just by the name and the cover sounds absolutely dreadful and awful. All, the, all that being the same, I'm excited. I'm ready. My, the, my body is ready. I don't know if my brain will be ready by the end of it, but I'm excited. <laughs> the title alone like dates this movie, even though it's only like two years old. I'm actually wondering, because we, we have people starting to file and we have uh, some people sit, 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 uh, seated already uh, to watch the movie. I'm wondering um, what enticed them to want to come watch a movie um, called Friend Request. Was it, was it the free movie theater popcorn? Was it the actual movie? Was it a date night? Who knows? But it is a bargain bin movie. This is this is this is a date night for for me and my wife. So when Heather Heather gets here, I told her I'm like, oh, we'll have like a little mini date night watching a, a terrible movie. And I feel like uh, we asked this question a lot recently. Where's Brittany? Brittany's upstairs. Like we're doing the, doing the Lord's work up for Wade upstairs. Brittany is doing the Lord's work, like we said, working upstairs, and she is being our our popcorn popper. Mm-hmm. Um, we bought some pop secret movie theater style butter popcorn, only the best here at Wade's, <laughs> and she is graciously for anybody who wants it up there popping the popcorn so she will be back to break it down with us which is exciting and she'll be on obviously for the rest of the show you already heard her do our intro rinse and raves per minute minute she'll be back in just a little bit matt this is our third bargain bid movie let's see we've done Fourth? the last witch hunter we did san andreas so third this is number three I th- yeah i think this is the third is the third going to be the worst, or is the third going to be the charm and be the best? Well, judging by the uh, the, I, the audience reviews, like apparently the critic and audience reviews are both very low for this movie. We're gonna we're gonna do those after two, and I'm yeah. gonna say what they are now. The audience, uh, sorry, the critic rating for this movie was 17 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, mm-hmm. and the audience rating was 22 percent. Yeah, not so- good. That, not that's good. not good. This isn't even like a, oh, the critics poo-pooed it, but the audiences loved it. This is like everybody universally thought this movie was trash. And yet, there are people who will come here and watch it with us, which well, is I mean, exciting. I, I, honestly, like, I hope it's entertainingly bad. That's that's all. That's the best I can hope for from this movie. You got to think that most of the movies in a bargain bin are of the entertainingly bad. I don't know. Right I mean... <sighs> We've seen some good movies. Yes, we've seen some good movies in there, but then there's the schlock that just, you know, what we need to offload some inventory. Let's just dump it. Well, this is most definitely the schlock. Yes. Um, unless we're absolutely in the minority and um, and wowed by it. Before we start the movie, this is the first time we're doing this. This is unique. Before we start the movie, I want to get your bargain bin rating, and then we'll do another one post-movie. Before we watch the movie, Matt, what is your bargain bin score? For <laughs> how can I, I do it? I, I, I like want to know. Nothing. How can I rate this movie? You can do it. Oh God! I'll, Judging by the cover, the title, and the preview, I'll that just you say saw. dollar store. Just just off the trailer, off the cover, off the premise. It, I'll say dollar store. I am also going to go with dollar store. Uh, Brittany will will give us hers when she's back to uh, tear down the movie with us. Uh, we're just a few minutes away from recording this. Um, we're hoping to do more of these. I think uh, yeah. this will be a really good time. Yeah, I'm looking. I am looking forward to it as much as I like dread dread this at the same time and like almost hate the idea. But at this point, anytime you get to watch a movie, drink some soda, eat some popcorn, it's always a good time. Yeah. You, you can't really go wrong. As I said, just entertainingly bad. That's that's what I'm hoping for. That's that's what I want out of this evening. I'm down. I like it. Um, we're gonna get to the movie. Uh, again, we're here at uh, Waze Comic Man. It's live, about to watch it. So uh, we will see you on the flip side and prepare for probably a really epic uh, takedown. That's on the other side. Let's do it.
All right. Friend request has ended. We're here. That's Bri- rude. You just unfriended me? I our did. Fr- our friend request has ended. Because of all your really shitty puns. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry, not sorry. Um, Brittany, you had a bit of a unique situation because, uh, as we mentioned, uh, as we were recording live at Bargain Bin Movie Night, you had to watch the movie after us because you were a trooper and popping the popcorn. Yep. I had to pop away. You did. You popped pop, away. Pop. Pop, uh, Georgie. Can you smell pop, it, Georgie? Pop, pop, pop. Can you smell the popcorn? God, we can't stop talking about it, and we're not even at that segment yet. I wish I could make my eyes do that weird thing, because as I'm talking to you, I would just do it and be like, one and lazy And I eye. would just get more reasons I'd, to I'd, not I'd, let I'd rather do the show I'd rather do again. the smile the Bill Skarsgård, where he like curls his lip down a little bit. He's so good. This isn't the It segment, guys. I know, I know, I know. Readers of the bargain bin, It's so hard, because we know we're preparing to talk about a bad, scary movie. So I know, we're like, it's like we don't <laughs> want to talk about it. So Brittany watched it uh, this morning. Alone over breakfast. Alone over breakfast. <laughs> Even a more sad way to watch this film. Uh, Matt and I watched it with a crowd that included Brittany's family, mm-hmm. who had a hell of a good time, if uh, good I'm time. not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, guys, let's get right down to it here. We mentioned it uh, as we recorded the intro that the critic score was 17% and the audience score was 22%. Accurate? I think so. <laughs> I think the audience score of 22%, like, I'm only leading towards, like, a 2.5 out of 10 at the most. Maybe a 3 tops. <laughs> is it, Wait, is it 22 or is it 28%? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, tw- I He's wanted to be 22, biased. so I said 22, but it's 28. Okay. And uh, I think I was I like, wait, what? Uh, <laughs> when we recorded last night as well. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm making the movie worse than it is, but I think it deserves... Like, no, it, it, it deserves everything. It does not deserve 28% audience score either. Um, Brittany... <laughs> You uh, you were messaging us during uh, as we were getting ready to come here yeah. about your thoughts on the movie. So we're gonna we're gonna start with you. You didn't get to get yeah. the the experience with us. I just want to preface it that maybe I have this like slightly better outlook because once again I was told all these horrible things about the film as you guys finished it yesterday. And when I went to rewatch it on myself, I was prepared for this to be the worst film I've ever seen in my life. Like, completely unredeemable, whatever. And I just sat there and, you know, I was eating my breakfast this morning and watching it. And I was just kind of like, yeah, it's not scary. And it's, like, poorly written. And there's certain aspects of it that I'm just like, where is this going? But I was just like, you know what? I watched it. I didn't want to, but I watched it. And it's not, unfortunately, the worst film I've ever seen. It's not, like, B-list Back of blockbuster movies like Killer Clowns from Outer Space, like How weird stuff. You, you know what that's I mean? A classic. Or well, yeah, that's fun to watch. <laughs> that is once a again treasured with classic. Or it's not like sci-fi movie at like two a.m. on like Sci-Fi Channel Y F Y. Like Asylum Pictures, I think are far worse than that film. I would rather watch Sharknado ten if there is a tenth. There's oh, not <laughs> yet. <laughs> Fine. I would rather Jason watch in outer space. any of the Sharknado movies before I ever watch. Well, I'm I'm never going to watch this movie again. Period. And I'm surprised I even watched. I didn't even. I got to a point where I didn't even want to watch the rest of it. And I know for a fact if it was on TV and it was like around Halloween when my mom and I will just you know watch any scary movie that's on TV or anything you know remotely Halloween related, we both probably would have turned it on. My mom probably would have been like, eh, and like left after the first twenty minutes. I might have waited till like halfway just to be like, is this gonna get any better? And like maybe just to watch Alicia Denham carry. That's like it. But I even got to the point where I'm like, as much as I love this actress, like, I, this is just going nowhere. I don't know how she could do so well in her... Oh, there's no way. She didn't need this film for her like, career at but all. But I'm just saying, like, she's so damn good in The 100. Mm-hmm. And then... Because it's watch, bad writing. It's just she, so it, bad. Out of all the performances, bad writing, bad it was directing. like her and the guy Kobe were the only good performances in the whole movie. And I, they, I like, don't know tried they were... their best to carry this film, but it was just bad. It's not I, their fault. I don't know if there were good performances in this movie, Matt. <laughs> they tried to save it, but they weren't, I, like, it's nothing sh- is, like, Oscar worthy. But, like, you, sh- you can tell some scenes that they, they have to do stupid shit in them, and you know for a fact they don't want to do it. Like, she gets stabbed, and she's scrolling through. Just double check. Is that skyline over there the same as in this thing I was looking up where these kids died? <laughs> ah, yeah, it is. And she's like, and you know for a fact that she is an actress. It was probably like, am I really, I'm not going to call any, like, what the fuck? But you got to do what you're... Man, I'm, I'm sorry, I want to get to you, but also, like, on that same subject, like, you're not going to tell the guy that you're fucking... Once again, that it's bad got, writing. Like, the, the guy who's, like, you're that. going to meet, like, stabbed you? Yeah. Like... Oh, no, there were plot holes everywhere. This come was, on. might as well be called Swiss Cheese the movie, but... <laughs> that, that, like, as I said before we recorded, I was talking to Brittany, I don't know who said that line in, in, our, in our little crowd, but the, there's, there's a part in the movie where, basically, the main character, whose name is Laura... 
essentially like she has this curse if you want to call it that this hex put upon her by um this goth chick who always wears a hoodie and so on and so who forth. arguably was just a spirit the whole time but once again the plot doesn't ever get into full explaining anything. Yeah, plot but she basically, but basically, like her close friends that were at this birthday party that this goth girl didn't get invited to all start dying, and so basically, this one guy figures out that she that she's going to live, but they're all all the everybody who she's close friends with is going to die. So he tries to kill her, so he stabs her, and she runs off. She escapes from him, and this dude's name is Kobe. She calls her boyfriend, and the whole time he's on the phone, somebody up front just goes like, "And Kobe stabbed me." And Kobe stabbed me, and she (laughs) She doesn't mention it it whatsoever. And the funny thing is, it comes full circle because Kobe stabs and kills her boyfriend. And you're like, if you would have just told him while you're in this cab, and the cab driver's the only one in the whole movie that's like, uh, should I be driving you to a hospital? Like, yeah, yeah, she's she's bleeding from an abdomen wound, and the cab driver's like, ah, should you you want to just go to a hospital? (laughs) Can we mention that that stab was like? It was a good yeah, stab. Yeah, it was a good stab. Like, it wasn't like Adrenaline a shitty, like, oh, shit, so far. I skimmed you. Like, I missed. No. Mm-hmm. She got, like, mm-hmm. good. It, like, it was a surprise. She was, yeah. like, standing face to face to him, and yeah, he just, like, Kush! like, I'm going to, uh, what's that line she, from Lord of the Rings? With the, she was Kylo Ren. Yeah, like, I'm going to gut you like, like a, a stop fish. pig yeah. or something like that. Whatever. Like, that's how good the stabbing was. Yet she's, like, walking around fine. And then I think, like, probably, like, one of the, you know, the... she, she might as well have not have been stabbed. Was, I, was, like yeah. he might have just like maybe sliced, tried to slice her and like lightly. Did they cut not her. have That's... a blood budget? I don't think so. Well, the thing is, I think they spent so much of their movie on their graphic design and the things for the social media pages, which was kind of cool. How like the transitions in the beginning of the film were cool, but at the same time, you're like, this went a little too long. Like they spent too much time in the beginning, like trying to explain what happened in the prior two weeks. <laughs> which I think this is a director like a horrible choice, either in screenwriting or like directing. That they're like, oh, I learned in college this thing called in media res. Let's start my film that way. But it's the worst possible in media res moment. It means in the middle of action, like things taking place. And you have it like, she, it starts off in the movie where she finds out this other girl has been killed. killed but you don't even know her relation to this other girl. And I- she's trying to sell it as an actress to be like, oh my god, this is all my fault. But you don't even know yet. You're just like, is are the, were they friends? The, the best, the best part lovers? about like, that was, because we even said it while we were watching it, is like, why did they have the opening scene? Because they no literally sense. went right back to yeah. that scene where it the It would have professor- made more sense if she starts out like in the it's the beginning of the semester she's like with her friends she like this one girl she's you know wants to be friends with because she's like oh this girl's from my class like she seems kind of nice she doesn't have a lot of friends whatever and then like slowly it gets creepy and stalkery what I think could have taken this film to a somewhat good level would be if they just decided is it going to be a stalker slasher film or is it psychological thriller because they tried to do like supernatural and slasher and psychological it was all over the place if they would have had character slowly seeing really weird shit and going insane with her it would have been much better because like we saw a little bit with the friends but they always cut it away right before it got scary so i also like, couldn't i couldn't take it seriously because they couldn't spend enough money on a composer to just do something other than da 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 like the whole fucking movie <laughs> yeah. like was just this awful oh, wait. i was just gonna say one of the most unbelievable parts of the film was the fact that every time someone got a message on their phone it was the loudest ringtone ever i know that sometimes it was like the spirit combining that weird frequency with like their sound but like was the spirit turning their phone on also and then making it ring really loud and their computer dinging off because like whose stuff rings all the time uh, so i'll i'll just do a quick quick rundown of the plot like i we already kind of yes, loosely please. have touched upon it but basically there's this girl named laura she goes to like this college that could be Somewhere on the West Coast. I don't think they ever explained what city We don't actually ever know in. what California city this is. So she, was it actually supposed to be in California the whole time? I, that's, what I, that's what I thought. I literally beaches. thought this was like shot in Australia, and then something weird like threw me off, and I was like, was this in Europe? And then it ended up being a German horror film. And yeah, apparently it's a German film. Huh. Go ahead. But so basically, she goes to college and blah, blah, blah. She has the idyllic life. She has lots. She has like over 800 Facebook friends, which they never Seems explicitly to come from say... Money. They never explicitly say Facebook, that I don't think. No, they, they couldn't get the rights. Yeah, they just, like, it might as well be called, like, Friend Book or something like that, which I'm, I would have laughed so hard. Star Trek they... into the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> but she basically, so she basically has this, she has the idyllic life, and then there's this creepy goth girl in one of her classes whose name is Marina, and Marina comes up to her one day. But no, wait, sorry, Matt. Sorry. Not Marina, Ma. Rena. Yeah, that's that's a stupid thing in this movie. Like nobody's, and I'm just gonna call it Facebook, even though they never. I, nobody's Facebook profile just has their, except hers. Yeah, at least not anymore. Yeah, like no, if this was made ten years ago, I'd have been like, that's believable. It's- yeah, yeah, but the, they basically everybody's Facebook profile name. It's like it'd be like 
my face f- Facebook was Ma T T. Like, <laughs> like that's. Can I call you that for now? Are you, you Samoan? For- What's up, so, so, Ma T T? Can you do that? Yeah. But that's how the like like her one friend Kobe. His name, his profile name is K O B E. Like Co Bay or Co- like I mean I don't mm-hmm. know, but so. Basically, the the girl's like, oh, you know, Laura's trying to be nice to Marina, and Marina's like, oh, I'm going to send you a friend request, and she accepts it, and Marina starts being a creep, you know, like, commenting on every single post, and she has all this weird shit on her Facebook page. Really cool art. Yeah. Really good art. The actually, That's what I, I mean. It I must have been, the, like... The animation was actually pretty decent. Some I, design artist got a job out of this. Yeah. That's what matters. This yeah. wasn't about anything else. <laughs> it was just like, hey... Look at my artwork. But it, Mar- Marina becomes a creep, and it gets to the point where she's like, "Oh, your birthday's coming up, Laura. I wanna, I wanna hang out with you on your birthday." And Laura obviously is creeped out, so she says no, or she lies. And Marina finds out because she gets tagged on her Facebook page. She kills herself. Only this whole thing ends up she's some kind of witch, witch cultist. Yeah, something. witch cultist. And when she kills herself, there's this whole thing of this mythology where if a witch does something with a black with a black mirror then essentially they become a new form and her her black mirror was literally her goddamn laptop with her webcam not to mention that like making witches villains is so like 1995 like the that's craft. what this was made for yeah somebody came up with this idea obviously in the 90s or early 2000s and then they like i guess maybe finally got a budget to do it or finally were like oh i have enough of a plot that we could probably do this they and put like the let script me get on one of those like us. websites of yeah. scripts that never get picked up and someone decided yeah. to pick it up well i said i said to Brittany before we were recording when you were upstairs is this movie felt like an early to mid 2000s horror movie when they pumped out like a crap ton and of And that's when things. it would have been like watchable and people probably would have been like, "Oh, it's goofy, let's watch it every Halloween." Like Yeah. Yeah, like like one missed call is what it reminded me of. I actually saw that movie in theaters with mm-hmm. an old girlfriend, but like that's literally what this movie reminded yeah. me of and that I don't think that's a good thing at all. I don't know why you you said phone call and you know what movie immediately it made me think of? Hmm. Phone booth. Great what? Movie. <laughs> oh my Great god. Movie. Yeah, yeah so say, speaking you're... of movies that did technology well. Yeah. <laughs> um and the limits of technology at the time if you think about it that way. Yeah. You can't leave really it. Nowadays it would be a cell phone you'd be like I'm just fucking walking across yeah, the bye. street. Um <laughs> Matt, I want to get your your take on something mm. um as an officer of the law. Okay. These shitty fucking cops <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> that, that scene. Really? Uh, all right, so one of her friends, really? we'll, we'll set this up for you folks. One of her friends basically gets attacked by this ghost thing or whatever. She gets she and she either gets thrown out. They never establish whether she gets thrown out or if she jumps out of the window, I don't think. I think she jumped out of the window okay, to so try and kill her. Basic, so basically like she land like they're trying to go rescue her friend. She lands on the hood of the car. She's totally messed up. Like her eyes are all like, you know, blue. blue that creepy blue they like, do throughout yeah, the movie. Yeah, like she's possessed or something like that. Props and so she's department. in the hospital. She's basically, you know, in intensive care and blah, blah, blah. And of course, the hospital has like nobody working in it because, you know, hospitals don't have people everywhere. And her friend, you know, suddenly gets up, starts like pulling out all of her stuff, which actually was a kind of effective scene because I was kind of like, oh, God, when yeah, she's like yanking out all of her of IVs like, oh. and her stuff like that. Yeah, and, that, yeah, I would agree, Brittany. And so they're two of the worst police officers ever. <laughs> Like one of them, there's a black guy who, if I said this during when we were watching, if it had been played by Danny Glover, I would have loved this movie, like a, like right three thousand percent. <laughs> and, they, and they definitely threw the line of like, I'm too old for this shit. Yeah, like yeah. they literally should because the guy was ADC, though. Yeah, because the guy was like, I've been a cop for twenty five years, and I was like, Yep, he's too old for this shit. And so basically, the friend like attacks the other cop. And like gets his gun and just and shoots herself right in front of this other cop. The old black cop walks over and the only thing he says, which closes out the scene, is he looks at the other cop and just goes, Really? It was so bad. I like I was like, oh <laughs> that my is God. the worst scene in the whole film, I will say that. <laughs> I mean but seriously, like how bad is this hospital staff? Because we were all like, Is there no one in this hospital? No, we mm-hmm. just couldn't see them because we were going to the point of view of the girl. Yeah. But like, dude, there were like four nurses that let this girl who's supposed to be like sedated and like mm-hmm. got IVs just like walk right by him like you should all be fired. And the cop should be mm-hmm. fired. Like, everybody should be fired in, in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. It's not even counting the other friend, which was the same thing. And and also, another thing is, I should not have to agree with the secondary villain of the movie. Oh, nope. yeah. Because... Well, the, what was the moral point of the movie? I, you know how, I, like, horror films, like, sometimes have a really, yeah, there's, really there's cheesy like moral point? Yeah, there's, like, subtle commentary. It was just, like, Facebook bad. It sounded like a boomer wrote this. 
<laughs> but like tried to be like a millennial. You know what I mean? I mean, it, se- like, it seemed like there were hints of what they might have tried to grasp if maybe if they had a better script or what a better direction. It's more or like they went like too that. many directions with their script. Yeah. If they would have kept towards like, oh, this is the psychological impact of social media and just did a psychological thriller would have been weird. And like sometimes incorporated weird supernatural elements. Like if you had done this movie of say like, you know, and like a critique of like, Hey, somebody commits suicide and somebody thinks that somebody else is to blame for it. And then they start pushing that person. And like, yeah, this is how they can go That's subtle. That's good commentary about like, Hey, you could all, we could all be that we Mm -hmm. can all push somebody away. And then they become that. Instead. It's like, there's an evil portion of the internet that took over a small child. She might've also already been born a witch, but we won't touch on that. (laughs) Um, and then apparently was she possessed by it? And now she possesses other people and just needs a different host body. Do they run out? Like the lore was nowhere. Yeah. And, and as I said, and lore is important. It is. And for supernatural films. And Kobe, the secondary villain, because the main villain is, is Marina. Yeah, I know. Every time they said his name, I was like, Kobe. Who <laughs> names their, their child Kobe? Yeah, I don't know. Like, really? I had a friend in college who went by Kobe, but that's because it was part of her last name. Fair so, enough. So, yeah, true enough. I haven't met a normal but like, Kobe. But when Kobe, like, tried to stab her and he basically said, like, we're all going to die if you live. I was like, okay, I, I kind of agree with him because technically at that point it was two lives versus one. And he straight up was like, how deep is this plot armor? <laughs> <laughs> oh, not deeper than my knife. <laughs> <laughs> not not deep enough where they could just not be on their phones and computers for the rest of the fucking and movie. I get that even if, like, the th- whatever possessed their Facebook pages and wouldn't let you actually turn it off. Like, just Go literally away. bash your phone and computer, throw them out completely, and just, like... Get a new phone or whatever, but or then go never live use, on an island yeah, for a few. Get rid weeks. of the apps or whatever you have to do. Marina, like, the Marina, the ghost would install Facebook on their yeah. new phone. Like, like, oh my god, what? it's installing! <laughs> like, was she also affecting their Instagram and all their other social media? Was she a social media <laughs> monster? We just don't know. Marina is an influencer, but Brittany, not, not the good kind. <laughs> but you, know. you brought up a good point that earlier about well, it, okay. this movie also just not knowing whether it was a slasher film or a and psychological thriller, really and that was like worse. a major yeah. issue. Um, Because you got to commit to it, especially with a horror film. Like, you commit to what you want to be. So, even if it's bad, people are like, this is like a a slasher film. You watch it when you want to watch a slasher film. This, I can't even categorize. No, and like like I said, like, there was, you you got stabbed, and there was like no blood blood budget. Like, Mm -hmm. what's his name? Um, Stabs, uh, stabs, I think, Kobe. Mm -hmm. And like, she ends up, or someone gets stabbed, and she ends up like, the dude gets stabbed in the neck, and it's really a little. And, and yeah, you're there's like, a little no. bit of blood on his neck, and like she has like a little drop of like, where's the blood splatter, like, that's man? That's your carotid artery. Yeah, you like, would be <laughs> spewing come profusely. Come on, um, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up with our bargain bin meter scores. Um, before we do that, we tested the audience after the movie last night and got their bargain bin movie scores as well. And this is only our third bargain bin, so we're trying to up uh, and evolve it and evolve it. We added another score to our score of bargain bins and that new score is garage sale not even worth buying at the store i would pick it up at a garage sale and uh a very good portion of our audience went down i didn't get names i did this in numbers we had one two three four members of the audience uh give the five. movie a sorry five mm-hmm. two three you're right f- uh five give it the lowest possible score of garage sale and then we had two audience members give it the dollar store score and one uh who i believe it was my brother your brother did give it the walmart be, be for the main reason being it had great social commentary <laughs> is that a pun maybe um maybe <laughs> um matt bargain bin score um I'm going to give it dollar store. One thing, the one positive I will give this movie, even though I don't like jump scares, it had a couple two. good jump scares. I know because I heard both those screams I from counted upstairs. Two. I was popping the popcorn. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't scream, but a couple people down in the basement did. So I will give the movie the slightest of props. And also the, the art of her Facebook profile. I like that. Like, I didn't think you hear that, that he liked it. He's next. <laughs> I did like it, like once again like I I've, I've seen worse movies. Mark I really T-T. have. This wasn't like like this also had a little bit of production quality on it. It wasn't like, I don't know it wasn't that. like all right like if we had if the three of us were like let's make a horror movie and we made something like this it would probably be the, garage. Sale. They had production value. They just lost it all after the first twenty minutes of exposition that they used all their budget in <laughs> for their digital whatever cool social media page with the art. Brittany, your bargain bin meter score. Mine, surprisingly, 
also Walmart like my brother because once again, when I when we picked this from Walmart in the five dollar like bargain, it wasn't area, even the five dollar, or not even like the, the one dollar. Yeah, whatever. it was like three, ended up being three dollars. Wherever it was from, it's exactly what I expected it to be. I actually like it was pleasantly surprised it wasn't worse. So I I would say it's worth three dollars at Walmart, and that's saying my my, my like. The, that's it f- going back to real really quick my wife had said that she actually disliked the last witch hunter more than this movie wow yeah because no not for me i nah, trust I your wife with my life <laughs> 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 i really do <laughs> this is a three dollar and 87 cent i think is what it is on the well then it was worth the bargain every bin dang penny at walmart of that 387 I am so tempted to be completely mean and also go with garage sale. I will I will give it the slightest bit of credit, like Matt said, for the two jump scares. Because I, I was one of those people that got caught in it and I should have known better. <laughs> I will give it dollar store. Was it the mirror part? One dollar. No. It that was the other one? There was, I didn't jump at I don't all. remember. There was, there was the one part where I think she backed up again near the wall and there was the face next to her yeah, in the darkness. Yeah, that's the closet that was behind one, her in the mirror him. scene. Okay. That's the first jump scare in the movie. Anyway, that does it for a friend request for this month's Bargain Bin. We will be back with next month's Bargain Bin film and one of our Indiegogo crowdfunded campaign contributors and a very good friend, uh, Nikki Vizi, will be in charge of the Bargain Bin next month. And then uh, in November, we will be having our second Bargain Bin movie night. Here at Weed's Coming Ma- Comic Madness, so come out for that. Maybe we'll do a Thanksgiving. And movie. there was much rejoicing. I don't know how many Thanksgiving movies there are. I don't think there's a lot of them. We could do <laughs> like a movie with pilgrims in it. Do we I have to stick to Thanksgiving? No, we don't have no, to stick to okay. Thanksgiving. So I was gonna say, when we get near Christmas, I'm one of those like Die Hard and Gremlins are Christmas films. Fight me, I will die on this hill. People, I mean, Die Hard's a Christmas movie. It is. His wife's yeah. name is Holly. It all <laughs> takes place on Christmas. Thank you. Anyway, we will be back with uh, Bargain Bin next month, and then our second Bargain Bin movie night in November. Let's get to our next movie review. We're going from an awful film to a pretty good film uh, in It Chapter 2. Good film book adaptation. Yes, good film book adaptation. We saw It Chapter 2 a week from uh, when you're listening to this uh, this past Tuesday. I think we all generally, I think uh, Brittany and I may have liked it a little bit more than Matt. Yeah. Um, we'll start with you. What were your uh, your initial thoughts on It Chapter 2? So it's been a while since I watched It Chapter 1. Like overall, I enjoyed the movie. It was, it, it was definitely, it's definitely worth a watch. I don't know if I would see it in theaters again because it is pushing the three hour mark, which I felt it was way too long. You could have cut some things out. The movie, like to me, the movie's strongest point is when it relies subtle horror mm. like not the jump scares where it's like Pennywise is bah, 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 like but like I'll, I'll give you two examples the two parts of the movie that I legit was like creeped out and uncomfortable was in the opening scene when the one guy after he gets thrown in the river when he's going up and bobbling mm-hmm. down the water and you see Pennywise standing on the bank holding on his hand towards him mm-hmm. that was a good that was a good scene and the other one was, and I know the guy, the teenager's Sorry, let me interrupt you really quick. I should say, um, before anybody listens any further, full spoilers yes. for mm-hmm. uh, It Chapter 2. Yes, sorry. And the other scene is when Bev is in the old apartment and the old woman's in there. And you've seen you've seen her in the trailers, but there's like when she's like doing the weird gyrations. The weird, yes. and giant booby dance. And she's mm-hmm. out of focus in the background. That's good shit right there. Because you can tell she's a creature in a skin. Yeah, like, she's she does like, that, you're like... Yeah, I mean, like, the only thing that would have made it a little bit creepier is if you heard, like, subtle cracking mm. or something like yeah. that of, like, her joints or Or the something. teenage boys behind us that were definitely scared weren't just, like, laughing to make it seem like they were... This is funny, this bro. Is, we're fine. <laughs> and I'm like, you don't have to be that masculine. It's okay to be a little creeped out by an old lady. But the thing was, as I said, the movie was far more effective... When it relied, when it had those subtle horror moments, as opposed to like the oh, the Paul Bunyan statue came to life, and oh my God, he looks at yeah. it's out of it's out of the frame, so he can't see it until he looks to the right, and then oh my God, it's right there. Like mm-hmm. that's one of the things I hate the most about horror movies is predictability. The per- well, not just mm-hmm. that, but the person can't see it because it's not in the frame. Like if it's right here, I'm gonna go like what? But if it's not in the frame of the movie, I can't see it. Well, I, I, I think it's creepier if somebody's staring like straight forward and the character hasn't seen it yet, but you know because it's dramatic irony. So if the clown statue's literally like this next to him, or even it himself, and the person hasn't turned yet, I'd be like, this is oh my god, turn, turn, turn. Well, you know? I also think I also think that setting that specific quest because I, I'm going to talk about this in my thoughts. Uh, they all had to go on uh, totem quests, basically. Mm-hmm. That is the only one that I didn't enjoy because basing that in daylight. 
I think immediately just takes some of the scare factor mm-hmm. away. And like you said, like it's a giant Paul Bunyan. Like really, come that on. That part wasn't in the book. I will say that oh. I don't think the Paul there was a Paul Bunyan. You both read the book, correct? Yeah. I have because with not. Richie, he was uh, terrified of werewolves. I believe so. Like it would change into a werewolf or do like creepy stuff like that. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that was Richie's, if I'm not mistaken. Your initial thoughts, Brittany, on um, it chapter two, and I, as some as the only person yeah. here who's read read the, it. Read and, it. It's big Stephen King person. Um, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good book adaptation. It's not like 100% correct, but I liked that it wasn't 100% correct because once again, there's some weird things in like it that don't need to be on film or like it, it would just take away because he does some like weird things because like the kids are afraid of, you know, specific different things. Yeah. Um, and there's different parts that I think they incorporated. They made a better story out of it. They did a good job of balancing what Stephen King wanted out of like going back and forth between like the kids and their adult lives. Like that's what he wanted from the story to begin with. And like the creepy aspects of the way it appears and it like harvests their fears or like kind of marinates them in their fears. You made a good point though about um, some things not needing to be in the book. And we actually had uh, some guests from another fellow Philadelphia podcast here. The guys from uh, Har Hente and Hand Grenades joined us. They unfortunately missed all of Friend Request, but we had a really good chat after. Uh, there were a lot of people who were apparently uh, Matt, uh, other Matt from that podcast, yeah. was telling me that were really concerned about Stephen King after reading it when it first came out. That he yeah. was in a bad place. And apparently, he was at the height of you know like a really drug bad use. cocaine. Oh yeah, addiction. he had a lot of yeah drug use back then. He came up with the idea, I think, in the late seventies, and then he wrote it from like eighty one to eighty five or somewhere in that range, and he was at the hut, but they did incorporate a lot of aspects of the book, like the whole like container that they put it in or try to put it in to contain oh, right. it. And yep. the, the fact that they like have that like Indian opioid substance that helps them like see and understand where he came from. Like that's also in the book, but I think the way they did in the movie was a little better. I liked how the film did specific things. Like while there is some like one or two things from the book that I'm like, oh, it would have been cool to see that. I think the movie really keeps you in the whole tone the whole way. And does things very well with the characters for me my um matt like you said this this movie was long yeah. it was I, I think it was maybe let's say half an hour maybe half yeah, an hour yeah you too probably long. could have cut at least half an hour the, I think the what, stuff with the bully could have been so and that's what i want to mention but uh, before i get to that i want to say part of what made this movie long was each of the kids individual quests to go get their their totem it's basically their sacrifice um, that was my favorite part of the mm-hmm. entire movie, and it, and uh, Matt, you were one of your concerns about this movie was them, you know, going back to them being kids a lot. Whereas, yeah. in fact, I thought that was one of the best parts of the movie. I think we all talked about how good the the cuts and cinematography oh, was. The transitions, yeah, the transitions was the were on yeah. point in this movie oh from from going from child to adult version. Mm-hmm. Best sacrifice scene was probably one of the coolest parts and creepiest parts of the movie with the with the old lady, like the old lady in the background, just. Mm-hmm. creeped me the f out and mm-hmm. you kind of felt like you were in the apartment like you felt the heat and like the yeah i'm uncomfortable yeah. i want to leave she's uncomfortable she wants to leave like i lived with an old lady mm-hmm. in an apartment for a really long time my evil grandmother um so i that like had a like special place like inside me anyway mm-hmm. already so uh, i i really liked and i i forget some of the characters names uh the the hypochondriac uh eddie Eddie Eddie's with the whole thing down Dude. in the basement of the pharmacy. The actors were so good. Like, the, they matched each other so well. Like, the kids to the adults and the adults to the kids. Bill Hader was great. Yeah, so um, good. Bill Hader was one of my favorite parts of the movie. My, I had one casting issue we talked about on the car ride back with mm-hmm. uh, Jessica Chastain as Bev. I don't think that she fit perfectly with young Bev. Uh, that was my maybe one of my only issues. And then as far as, like, shaving a good portion of this movie off... The whole thing with the bully from It Chapter 1 could have been completely cut from the movie. It served zero purpose, in my opinion. I think they just kept it because it's in the book. Like, that he does come back also with the 27 years later. He escapes from the asylum, and he does attack them. In a little different way, but yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that was was just, I I feel, Mm -hmm. unnecessary. Did we have any specific, I know we've talked about some, any other, like, specific favorite moments from It Chapter 2? The girl under the bleachers. Oh, oh. oh. With that, and just in case, like, if you've seen the trailer when Penny claps his hands and he goes, hello, that's the scene when there's this little girl who has this big, like, birthmark on her face and she's obviously self-conscious about it. And it's a, it's a very good, like, I'll, here's Bill Skarsgård pretty much owns the Pennywise oh, character. 100%. 1,000%. Because his whole thing, because he 
And because a lot of people have said to me, like, and I've heard other people say is like, you know, he looks so creepy. Why would children ever approach him? That scene under the bleachers shows why, why they would. Mm -hmm. Because it's a little girl. She has this big birthmark and she's mm -hmm. very self-conscious about it. And at first she's like, she has a natural reaction. I would have like, you're mm -hmm. goddamn creepy, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out of here. And he starts like, you know, crying. He's like, people don't like me because of my face. He connects. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and he connects, connects with, with her, her. And then she, he's like, you know, I'll just blow that mark right off your face, just yes. like that. And then immediately she's like, you will? Yeah, and then yeah, that's when he gets, and that's how he gets her. And I mean, and that was a scene, like, oh my God. You know, like that was one of the most, like, stressful. Yeah, because it's scenes. like, it's this whole, it's the slow build up to it because, you know, he's like, oh, on the count of three. And he's like, and like, he's drooling yeah. and everything. You could, like, he's hungry. Like, and that, the fact that he pauses and he does that awkward pause, like, when he doesn't know what to do because he's not human yeah like whenever it's like even as the old lady when she like pauses and stares at beverly too long and you're like this is sl slightly too long and it makes you uncomfortable yeah oh yeah and yeah. his eyes like do the thing where he's just like yeah as, as and she and the old lady specifically has that like creepy smile for a good does, like yeah. i think 15 seconds yeah and then she goes back to normal oh mm -hmm. how about you oh well there's so much there I is say, it's a long movie and i like that the that you brought up that part because it literally feeds off of your fears and also like people's violence. So that's something I think they did really well of incorporating, especially with the way they opened it with like a homophobic attack happening first. And mm -hmm. this is a real story that Stephen King wrote about. Like this really happened to somebody. Not that he, you know, was then killed no. by a clown later. But no, he, no, <laughs> unfortunately, the clowns are the homophobes. But um, I hate like clowns. Th there was an attack, and then somebody was thrown off a bridge. Yeah, I think I remember attacked, reading about that. And then he had, um, he already had asthma, so he had an asthma attack while he was in the water, and it wasn't really enough water for anybody to drown in per se. But he was towards the end of his life, and he had an asthma attack, and then like drowned on that water. Hmm, that's so, gonna that's like gonna kill you exactly. Yeah. So they had that in the water where, where, when he tells you like you know he has asthma, and they're like still beating him, and then they throw him over the bridge, and then. But, like, oh, the way they do that scene is so cool. And as, literally, as a member of the LGBT community, like, that whole beginning sequence, I was crying. I didn't even mean to cry. I was just, like, crying. No, but that has time. to have an effect yeah. on you. Yeah, well, it does. And, like, but it was just, it was an amazing way to open it because I just thought it was really well done. And it shows that it is a creature that feeds on this fear and violence. And, like, as much as people, I guess, like the actor, like Bill Skarsgård, or, like, like Pennywise the Clown in general and just think it's, like, all fun and games and, like, a joke. Like, no, this is a creature, an extra-dimensional creature. That literally feeds off of human fear and violence. And that's why he waits the, the 27 years to kill them or to try and kill the kids again because they're marinating in their fear. Even when they forget about Derry, the moment they re they remember anything about it, they all have panic attacks mm -hmm. or something with fear. And it, it smells that. It's like, yes, I'm back. You're afraid. I can't wait. And I want to I talk about that because that was actually one of my favorite scenes. Um, I, I do want to say real quick that that mm -hmm. opening scene with the, with the attack was just brutal like yeah. it, it set the tone but for I, the I like that film. it was brutal because it, anything yeah. less than that would be cheapening the realistic One, nature of what it's like to be in fear of being gay 100 percent, especially in a town that's already racist mm -hmm. homophobic and it's like the 80s yeah um well and even in you know current times they mm -hmm. show that you know this shit's still going on which sucks mm -hmm. um my favorite scene from this movie one of my favorite scenes is there i'm gonna i'm gonna do two was one when they're all getting the phone call from Mike mm -hmm. at, and showing each one of them's, you know, their reactions and how uh, another really powerful scene, seeing that Bev can't escape um, being, oh. you know, basically and controlled so by someone. She has well, a controlling... Well, all of them, like, because the, the one character, like, his mom was an overweight yeah, controlling and, and so is his an wife. Woman. Yeah, uh, they can't escape, you know, the tropes of, of, of their childhood. Yeah, the basically. traumas of their past, they can't. Really, really great scene. Mm -hmm. uh, great scenes, I should say. And then... Their reunion in the Chinese restaurant oh, was so good. so good. So good. Going from the funny moments to them realizing, oh shit. Yeah, it's as real. Yeah. What did we just get ourselves back into? We shouldn't have ever made this pact, but mm -hmm. we're all here now. Uh, it was just really, really cool and really, really deep. I, I really liked this movie. I liked it better than It Chapter One. I can't really decide like what my favorite scene was, but I like the ones that you guys touched on. But I will say that the scenes that stress me out the most out of all of this... Between the first part of the, like the first chapter and the second chapter are whenever Beverly is alone with her father. Mm -hmm. Just because like that's a real thing that happens to people and like you just he's 
so scary because you know that it will mess with you until it's ready to like eat you or kill you. But her dad is scarier than, than this than monster Pennywise that will it, yep. eat you because you know what her dad will do to her. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I hope I don't have to watch this on film. This is so stressful. It, it was specifically stressful for me. I'm, I, I'm not, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to shy away from I'm a victim of abuse from two different people, uh, both in It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2. Those were really hard scenes to watch. Absolutely. I, I, I agree mm-hmm. with you. Uh, really stressful and once again they they do it truthfully and not in a way that like makes light of it, or, light of it yeah. or does it overly violently in a certain way but yeah i think whatever changes they made from the book worked and i don't think there's anything really like that stands out a ton from the book that i would want them to do for the movie other that the way they defeat it is a little more like intense and they're like actually like fighting it to die whereas this one i thought it was because they're bringing it into this like unity and this friendship and they're supposed to move on from the tra- traumas of their past the way they take him down is more of like a moral high road yeah. or like a unity thing of like friendship rather than like oh now i'm gonna go inside of it and rip its heart out yeah, and like stuff like that like drax but and guardian city <laughs> arguably with the way the movie's done it, it made it carry a lot more weight and then the ending you're actually like wow this group of friends this friendship this everything they went through is so powerful and this was like just a beautiful the, thing like I, I know we said spoilers but the one character who died who was that the at near the end that, that died i can't remember eddie, eddie. like I, I even said this after we walked out like what did they tell eddie's wife you know after oh, like, yeah, like, oh yeah your I, husband like, your husband died beneath mm-hmm. this old creepy house that then folded in on itself and became a giant hole yeah, <laughs> yeah. um before we give our film real scores uh in in this day and age it's always inevitable that they want to make bank on these movies mm-hmm. uh a rumor of already a potential sequel uh uh, not sequel, sorry. Um, a potential prequel. Hmm. Uh, what's the name? Peter Scar- Scarsgard? Bill Scarsgard. Bill Scarsgard yeah. has said he's completely down to do oh, it. Oh, because they want to explore Pennywise yeah. and how he what comes to What do you guys think? Is that, is that a movie you would go see? I'd be interested in seeing that. However, the thing is, is that like, like do something really cool, unique with mm-hmm. it. Don't do it in like the seventies or the whatever mm-hmm. like that. Like do it in like the twenties. Yeah, or, take it far back. I think that's back. what they the will do because it was a long time ago. Yeah, like do um, it sometime when like there's you know when there's even less, there's less people and stuff like that. And there's not a lot of help and so on and so forth. And you know that would be mm-hmm. cool to see that. I yeah, I do love that for him, and I think they could explore it that way, and it wouldn't really detract from these two films. I'm just a little worried whenever they do a backstory, like, focus one, it's like, how are they going to do it without source material? But <laughs> Stephen King has, like, thousands of years worth of books he wrote. Also, also, like, when we were watching that, when Stephen King made his appearance. Oh, was... <laughs> that's my favorite scene! I totally forgot, when... but I love that he's in the movie, and <laughs> they talk about bad endings. Yeah. Because, once again, things people have complained about before, the ending of It, and also... A lot of his books, the way they end, or like certain things, were like it was cool until the ending. Then it kind of like out. Oh yeah, I mean the James yeah. McAvoy character was essentially like because he's a writer. Self writing. Yeah, everybody he does hates it all the time. everybody hates his endings, including his wife. Have and, you seen Misery? <laughs> and but one one thing I will say, like that kind of like t- like one of the reasons that I don't like hold this movie up as some amazing thing of horror. That some of the jump scares were like all right. Yeah, it's not scary. Yeah, and all and also the fact is that like I didn't believe in like Bev pined after the James McAvoy character nonstop. And at one point she even kisses him. And even though he's married and there's been no hint that like, he's like unhappy with his wife and the kid who was chubby has been like pining after Bev. I think there was a little hint there, I mean, at a, the very like, beginning of the movie. That yeah. They but like, I mean like, but then like Bev suddenly just swings her affections to this dude when that, after that whole scene, well, where he's like, I love you. And it's like, Oh, uh, and like, I was like, wait, that was a little, I sudden. will say the only reason it makes sense is because of her, like how she was treated as a child and mm. her abusive relationship yeah. she's in now. It's it's hard for her to understand what love really is and who actually loves her. So in her mind, she's built up this idea that, you know, instead of Ben, it was Bill or vice versa, right? Yeah, Bill's the one who had Georgie as his brother. So yeah. yeah, she thought it was Bill the whole time, but only because like he more outwardly showed his affection for her, whereas Ben was like, Didn't you know, really, wrote yeah. the note, but then would hope she would just notice. Yeah, and shy he backed new kid. off a bit. Exactly, Typical shy, shy new, new kid. kid. Yeah. But once... And once again, this is also with their memories being completely gone. Once certain things occurred, like if the memories slowly come back, that's why they had to do the totem thing. In the book, it's more so they had to go face, you know, certain things that happened in their life and overcome them so that their <laughs> memories would be restored so that they could have that unity to defeat it. They just did it with the totem thing, which I thought was cute and cool. Um, but yeah, that's why. Matt, film reels out of five. And you could do halves. Um, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a 
four. As I said, like I considered three and a half, but like it definitely, I'd say it's worthy of a four. As I said, like I, I feel it's, sh- they could have gone with a lot more subtle horror, a lot more like uncomfortable mind fuckery. Mm-hmm. And I would have loved this movie like way more. Like if they had done more like out of mm-hmm. focus stuff in the background when like we, the audience are like, Oh God, like I would have loved this movie more than I, more than I do. I'm gonna give it five reels out of five. Not wow. because not because I think it's like the greatest horror movie I've ever made. Like I said, I literally I don't think I jumped at all. I didn't really feel like particularly scared, but to me that's not what it's about anyway. Mm-hmm. A lot of Stephen King's works aren't actually horror. People just automatically associate him to be because like Carrie was big and yeah. all his films that became big were you know, horror. But I I just think it's a really good adaptation. It's a faithful one. Even though it's not like a thousand percent accurate, it's good in that it doesn't include some of like the weird stuff that you're like, yeah, it might have been because he was on drugs, might have been because it was the 80s. The, the child orgy, guys. Yes. That's what we're um, yeah, That that's... is one thing I'm particularly happy they didn't include. Yes. And they just did the the, the blood yes. brothers scene. Because that makes more sense, first of all, as children, but it whatever. It 100% yeah. does. And Agreed. also, I could get into that later, but I'm not going to. That's something, I, after I read it, I literally forced it out of my memory until it comes up in conversation again. Then I'm like, oh, I got to relive it. Fitting. Thanks, Stephen King. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, I just thought it was a good adaptation and it's just, I have so much faith in what will come for Stephen King movies now. Cause especially with, we saw the Dr. Sleep trailer. It looks and so good with how well it has done. And it's gotten more people to, I guess, start reading his works and it's like fitting in with another generation. They actually had enough funding and a budget to do much better than the TV adaptations. So I'm I mean, excited. listen, the, the TV adaptation sucks balls. Like it's bad. T- Tim Curry is yeah. like yeah. the only redeeming. He's the only good part. Exactly. Um, I, I hate to do it, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm going to stick with my, because I thought about four, I'm going to give it a three and a half just because I really do think the length uh, is a is a major Jackson. issue. I yeah. think this movie could have really uh, benefited from a little bit more editing, shaving like a good half an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, I think three and a half is fair. I, there's nothing, I, I said at the end of the movie, mm-hmm. I, I loved it all the way through. It kept my attention. Uh, movies of this length can tend to... Yeah, you're um, kind of looking at yeah. your watch. Yeah, and... I didn't do that, but I knew immediately going in how long the movie was going to be. So in my head, I was like, okay, they could have cut that. Okay, they could have mm-hmm. cut that. Okay, this could have been trimmed down. So three and a half. Solid three and a I, half. I, I actually, I won't argue it. I think but... I said this. I think I said this after we walked out, but honestly, like it to me would be better almost as like a, a mini an Amazon right? oh, series sure. yeah. or Netflix or something like that where you can it's take all the time to... Ex- chapter. Yeah, you could, you could explore all this stuff because... With a movie, you have to condense this. You have mm-hmm. to do this. You have to, and so on. And, and it's so a forth. long book. People don't realize, but it is one of his like thicker books. Oh, you could beat somebody yeah. to death with it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which would be fitting. You beat your own childhood to death with it. <laughs> but um, I will say that the one thing I didn't realize was how long it was. Like I was so into it, we know, because I literally like forgot I even had popcorn and like kicked it under you my did. chair. Your I didn't kick did it like being scared. It. I literally just like I have long legs, so I'm always doing something and I have ADHD. So I like pushed it under my chair. Somewhere like into ten minutes into the film, did not even look down or like notice until I crunched on a piece of popcorn, like probably within the last twenty minutes of the film. And I went, Oh no, my popcorn <laughs> Yep. But I like I didn't notice the length at all, even of the first one. Because on the on the ride home, I was like, oh yeah, oh wait, it's past midnight. The, the, when I didn't we get watched in bed it, chapter one, it was it was long. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize either time, but I was just like real into it, and I was like, oh my god, I love this. Oh my god. I think you could tell by all of our scores if you haven't seen it, if you're mm-hmm. not, you know, you don't care about the fact that we have spoiled something for you. Definitely go see it. I think it is worth seeing in the theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely, definitely a a go to. There are a lot of good movies coming out. We're going to have more reviews for you. We're going to be doing Joker. We're going to be doing, um, you know, some people have done the perk for, you know, going on a movie date with us. So there are a few more movies. See, I think uh, we have to do a review when it comes out for, you said it, and now I can't think of it. Um, Doctor Sleep? Yes, yeah, Doctor Sleep, 100%. Um, so look out for some more film reviews. Uh, that's going to do it for episode 30. We will be back next week with episode 31. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, uh, for uh, listening. Uh, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, and wherever else you listen to our show. Uh, if you can, please contribute to our crowdfunding campaign. We'll see you next week. Have a good night. Pop, pop, Georgie.